Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today, we're going to be seeing if we can bring this Lincoln Town Car back to life. We thought we'd switch things up and try a fuel injection arrival to see if they can sit just as long as carbureted cars and still be nursed back to life. Now, of course, like I said, this Lincoln Town Car has been sitting for a long, 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 long time. 20 years and 35 and a half feet. We bought a limo. <laughs> what are we doing? All right, uh, let's let's begin. <laughs> Damn near had to buy a larger camera lens for this one. So like I just mentioned, this is a 1986 Lincoln Town Car Ultra Limousine. This sucker is 35 and a half feet long. It's got three couches inside. There's three TVs in there. It's got tandem rear axles. And the whole thing is powered by a 302. Don't know how it's supposed to move, but it's supposed to move. I can do the whole intro to the vehicle while walking, and I just now get to the bumper. <laughs> Let's check out the inside where all the good stuff is. This is gonna be so ridiculous. So yeah, coming inside, we have ourselves a MOOC. Get out. <laughs> is this your house? Yep. So we'll start our tour at the rear of the car. We have your typical entry level bench seat right here for the poor bastards in the back. It also folds down into a queen size bed, <laughs> surrounded entirely by mirrors and there's a bloody handprint back there. One thing you guys won't pick up on camera is the awful mouse piss smell uh, and all the stains all over everything. We're gonna need a lot of D-germ. But moving forward from the rear bed seat, we have the full bar equipped with a television, a phone, and all the decorations when it was last used in like 2000 because it's been in a barn for 20 years. Our cameraman sitting on the center seat in front of the main bar. Moving forward, we have the mini bar with the other TV and Mook up on the 90 degree couch up front. The whole thing surrounded by awesome mood lighting and speakers. I like how we all have our own couch. Yeah, we all have our own like living room sized couch. What'd you find? These. What the hell are those? I don't know. I can't read, remember? <laughs> what does it say? They must have done a holiday light tour in like 93. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh, I was expecting plastic. It's not. Mook, we're going to have new glasses for our house. What an upgrade. All we had to do was buy a limo. This is some expensive ass cups. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to cut the camera while I walk to the front of the car and we'll be back tomorrow to see the driver's compartment. Before I can even get in, I'm finding stuff I've never seen before. Check this out. This looks like there's a thermometer right here integrated in the mirror. That is a, it's a ground speed indicator through wind. <laughs> Bring her up to seven knots for the interstate, Captain. Put this boat to sail. <laughs> All right, let's check out what we got inside. An incredibly unergonomic sitting position for this poor bastard. Well, he's probably getting yelled at by drunks in the back. Oh, hey, drunks in the back. Hey, I want McDonald's. <laughs> You don't really feel like you're driving a 35 and a half foot limo except for you can move all you want and the car does not move. <laughs> it doesn't shake. I got some sweet light things here. Oh, hey, Hecker, <laughs> I will put this partition window up. Give me that. Uh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Everything here is still 86 Lincoln Town Car uh, with a thousand buttons on the door and then just an absolute beyond 90 degree seating position. Looks like we're marking 31,000 miles on the clock. We have a fuel gauge, a temp gauge, a clock about that big, and a speedometer, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> Wait. You go straight up and down with that thing. <laughs> Gotta get to church and get the whole congregation in the back and go to a different church. Ooh. Well, maybe we can get some dates off of this. That looks like a 93 mouse nest. I don't know, Mook. Oh, good year from last nest. Oh, are these business cards? Ultra Limousine Incorporation, Des Moines, Iowa. I'm actually going to turn this over to my cameraman to give you guys a quick history of what the hell Ultra Limousine is. Hi, Gigi. Hi. Will you take fire me to McDonald's? Down. Sorry, no. <laughs> it was last insured in 01, so it's been off the road for 20 years. Okay. All right. So, let me look over my notes. <laughs> Definitely didn't Google this last night. 
Alright, so many, many years ago, some guy named Vinny Bergman. He moved to LA, went to jail, because that's what everyone in LA does apparently. Once he got out, he started making one-off cars for celebrities, all this custom fabric, and he was damn good at it. So good, in fact, that he started making limousines. His first one was a 78, it was a Lincoln Continental, or a Lincoln Town Car, I can't remember. At the time, limos had 30 to 60 inch splints in them, and with his first car, he decided to just throw nine feet of extra car. This car was 20 feet to begin with. So now we've got a 30 foot boat, and he just decided, let's just throw in a hot tub and another axle at the back. And thus, Ultra Limousine was born. This one's quite strangely optioned out as it has the gold trim everywhere. It's got TVs, it's got an extra sunroof, it's got an extra longness to it, and the tandem axle. But yet it still has cloth seats and not leather. But yeah. Oh, it has the vinyl roof. Are these cigarette burns and everything factory? Yep, probably. <laughs> Well, thank you, Jesse, for that oddly specific insight that you somehow learned overnight at probably like 1 a.m. while Googling things, and now you're a limousine professional. 1.30. <laughs> Let's throw some batteries in this big old son bitch and see what happens. We got Ting Tools out here in the middle of nowhere, somewhere south of Marshalltown, Iowa, uh, where we're surrounded by farm equipment. Yeah, so it's a bit of an odd find, a limousine being on essentially a tractor junkyard, it looks like. But uh, either way... Tang Tools six drawer roller cabinet is going to help us get this thing back on the road. We brought some gas, an external tank, a couple little pumps with us. Uh, being an 86 Ford, most Fords of that era ran a dual pump setup. They had a lift pump in the tank that fed into a high pressure on the rail. I have no idea if this is like that. It might have six higher pressures to keep the fuel moving. I don't know. Uh, hopefully our fuel lines aren't rusty. The guys we're buying this from pulled it out of a barn and flat towed it here. They said the brakes work, so that shouldn't be a problem. If it is a problem, I'm going to have to go buy out every part store worth of connectors and rolls of brake line to get from the front of the car to the back of the car to fix that. But we'll get to that when we get to that. This is a dual battery car, but it should crank just fine off one. If I had to guess, one runs the motor, one runs accessories on like a diesel, but we'll see. Oh no, it's coming for a subscribe! Actually, hey, I just found another seat right here. Uh, Supersonic of Merle Hay, somewhere down by like Des Moines. Looks like the last time to put gas in it was 03. That's, that's definitely enough to kill fuel pumps. That takes like four years. So, eh. <laughs> so, eh. Are you yelling at the chickens? Yeah, they won't talk. He responded! <laughs> Jesse talked about this, but I don't think we showed it enough. Real quick before we throw a battery in. Check out this grill. Gold grill, gold hood ornament, gold lights, and gold stripes all the way down the side. This thing is pimping. Numbers. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably the DOT number, because this needs a chauffeur license to be a commercial vehicle. But we're not going to, it's not for hire, so whatever. No, 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 no. That's the boat registration number. Your car's extended warranty was going to expire and wanted to give you one final courtesy call before your warranty expires. This would make you financially responsible for all service repairs. Shit! Sure, yeah, let me... Oh, I hit the red button. Sorry, you bitch. Anyway, I'm gonna say my joke again because it was funny. That's the boat registration number. <laughs> <laughs> there is 10,000 wires in this car. On every side. Like, look at that. I don't even know what that box is. Model 10 130. Oh no. That's the best model. <laughs> Why this car? I mean, maybe that was the only car you get with a V8 back then that was classy and large, but damn, I would have put a 351 or a 73 in there or something. How does this thing move down the road? Well, with a lot of their custom 90 some feet cars, they put a Cadillac like 500 in them. Because I would imagine. <laughs> Can we put the Perkins in it? If this video gets a million views, we'll put a twin turbo LS in this with, with turbos sticking out the hood. That's up to you guys. I want to get rid of this because we don't have anywhere to store it because it is the length of our shop. But if this bitch gets a million views, 
we'll put a turbo LS in. If it gets 750,000 quick, we'll put nitrous on the 302 and see what happens. Is that a fire extinguisher? <laughs> That's actually a great spot for that. All right, here we go. Oh! It did a spin. It did a spin. I'm dumb. I tried to listen for a fuel pump, but I forgot it's a football field away. I'm not going to be able to hear it. Don't crank it. We got to check the air box. It's full, but it's gross, but it's full. Okay. Let's make sure we don't have any mouse houses that we're going to suck into the motor here. I think these are speed density motors, so we don't have to worry about this really being on, honestly. Oh, that's fine. Do you want me to go a mile that way and see if I hear a pump or anything? Yeah, if you want to <laughs> go off there on the horizon and lay under the back of the car. I can't even get the back of the car and focus. Uh, just shoot me a phone call if you hear anything. I can only mail a letter. <laughs> She's in a different postal code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> different. Hey, we got different zip codes. <laughs> Ready, Moot? Yeah. If there is a word, it's very, very quiet. All I hear is a click. Let's see if it cranks. Holy crap, this is the first car we've ever owned the clock works in. Look at it go. Lower motor. Oh, it does. Please turn off. That's probably stinky. Corner supported by tight domestic supplies and solid domestic demand. That actually sounds really good. You got three of the four. Now you got two of the four, which makes sense. Oh, these are these lights. Ooh, Ooh. rope lights. This middle one doesn't do anything. Oh, oh wait, yes it does. In here. Oh it does? And the bottom switch does these. Oh, in the back. Oh! What's this red one? <laughs> That's to dry it out. <laughs> yeah, leave those on. <laughs> oh. That switches between tape deck and radio. Oh! Oh yeah! <laughs> this was owned by a church. So the partition kind of works. Is it made of cardboard? Mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no, but I'm also not gonna say yes. Do you think I can get Netflix on these TVs? Oh, I can lower the seat. Oh my god, did you hear that? The seat goes down. I can't not hear it. Holy shit, do those it's work? penetrating into my soul, the high-pitched squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> what, have you never seen a tube TV? They gotta warm up. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I was born in this century. Heck right off. You were born off. when this car was parked. <laughs> what about the one back here? <laughs> it works! At least it screams. Wait for the tubes to warm up and see if there's a TV picture. Yes! Oh my god, <laughs> static. I haven't seen that in years. You, is there a knob? There it is. It don't work. All right, well that's enough goofing around. Let's see if we can get this thing running the, and then really continue to goof around. I was say, that's not the end of the goofing around. All right, come on out, it's time to talk tech. Oh, actually, I just found one more thing we have to look at before we start working on it. The trunk button. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What you got? Holy shit, it's got a subwoofer. <laughs> what? Dude, this thing probably bumps. Oh, it's got two, it's got a Kenwood amp and some other brand of amp that I don't know. This some bitch is wired for subs. We got ourselves an air tank, power steering fluid, brake fluid, oil. An umbrella. 9,000 wires, a jack, which I feel like that would do nothing for this car. All right, so fuel injection revivals. Basically, if we have spark and we have fuel, uh, this thing's gonna run like poop. And, but it might potentially run as long as the injectors aren't hung open or something dumb's happening. I anticipate all the sensors to be clogged up and probably not gonna know what the hell to do with themselves. They might get better as it goes. Uh, it probably needs to relearn its mapping for sure once it gets running. Uh, but we should in theory be able to maybe make this thing run. First thing I need to do is find the Schrader valve to test our fuel. I don't want to say pressure, but presence. 
test our fuel presence. Seeing that it was refilled last in 03, that would have been probably ethanol, maybe. Uh, so our fuel's probably completely eaten anything submerged in it, being the pump. And we're probably gonna have to drop a tank, which I looked at that before we bought this, and it looks like it should be pretty reasonably something we can like actually make happen out here in the field because you can just kind of I'll show you there's like a little fort in the back of the car by the tank that you can crawl up into all right Schrader valve there you are all right turn the key on moot yeah I mean I don't know what I'm listening for it's literally like 70 feet of line here and back go ahead do it again a few more times off Okay, I guess first thing we need to do is figure out what kind of fuel system this is. If it's a high-low pump or just a high pump in, in tank. Let's see if we can find ourselves a fuel pump relay and make sure that's running first. Turn the key on again, move. Fuel pump relay should shut itself off after a few seconds. Uh, off again. Back on. This one. Do it one more time. That's our fuel pump relay. He seems to be working. He's going on, off. So he's good. Um, I'm seeing purple, white, yellow, and red. Those are our fuel pump wire colors. At that point, we just start tracing them back. Looks like they immediately disappear into this pile. So those are gone forever. Does the horn work? Hey, does the horn work? This thing is a train and it has a train horn and that only makes sense. All right, we need to find our fuel lines where they go down. See what side of the car the fuel lines are on and then start following them back for 35 feet. The drive staff <laughs> has like seven sections. <laughs> so I think these are our fuel lines. They're pretty rusty. Yeah. <laughs> they might be okay. But it looks like they run on the inside of this rail as far back as I can see with no pump. So, yeah. Dude, this thing was Pimping. You look like you're high. I think I am. I just bought this. <laughs> Mook's now gonna crawl into the fort that I was talking about. <laughs> it's getting cold out, by the way. That's why I heard they're up. It's like 45 today. Or 40. 41. There There's you so go. There's so many space for activities. I told you, it's like a fort down there. I am sitting under a logo. That also gives us access to our tank right there. So I can just kind of <laughs> chill under there out of the wind. I'm coming out. Oh. <laughs> Born from a limo. <gasps> Hi. That you can buy so these so filthy, so dirty sweatshirts. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna you up. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> He's a meanie, but you shot up. <laughs> it's got a wiggly tooth. Quality with a K. So the way these tandems work is the front axle is driven like a regular car, and then the rear sits on airbags, and uh, it's supposed to just ride around back here. Look what this is made out of. This is made out of scrap metal. There's two like K bar looking, K member looking thingies. Nope, never mind. It's just square tube with a plate welded at the bottom, welded in the middle. Up here is like some spindle looking thing, but right here and there are just two big ass one inch pieces of steel rod booger welded in here. And like there's a little like three eighths rod right there for filler. This is just slapped together and thrown out the door. What a freaking nightmare this is. Dual exhaust though. So that makes up for it, right? Uh, I'm tracing the lines all the way back and I never saw a high pressure pump, so this might just be an in-tank pump. Let's go ahead and crawl under there and see if we can drop that tank. I don't know where any of the pump wiring is. Um, this is just like bits of random steel just slapped together right here. Let me let me bring you in here underneath the car for a little tour. So this side's got square tubing holding the fender skirts. This side has rebar. <laughs> this side has whatever the hell that is. That side's a piece of angle iron. There is like a Watts link type thing going on in here. Uh, here's our airbags of questionability. Here's our fuel tank, which looks like I can just reach up and pop these two bolts off and drop our fuel tank nice and easy. Uh, here's some more 
random metal built into a structure of <laughs> this thing. This is terrifying. All right, looks like I need 9 16 wrench and some PB blaster and we can get this tank out. So assuming we can get this running today and we drive it all the way back to Ames and live. In part two, we're gonna resume with the story of this limo. We're gonna wash it, vacuum it out to the best of our ability and then do things with it. What we wanna know is what things you guys want us to do with this limo. Similar to the idea when this thing was built in a cocaine fueled rage, what crazy ideas do you guys have that you wanted to see us do with this limo? I'm thinking go through McDonald's, take it through a car wash, uh, just try to drive around town. Uh, we should go to Menards and buy really long like pieces of wood. <laughs> So I want to see down in the comments, what do you guys want to see us do, and we're going to do it. Minimal drama and maximum effort has given us, wait for it, a fuel tank. Oh, it's the filler tank. There we go. Filler tank just failed. That's one way to do that. First, we must remove the car from the gas tank. <laughs> uh, this is actually a new tank that was replaced in 2000. So that's interesting. Let's get our multimeter in here and see if we're sending power to this pump. And then we'll know if our pump's bad or if we have an electrical problem and our pump's probably still bad. Hey, yep. 12 volts. That means we have power. So if we have power, it's not an electrical fault, rather it's a mechanical fault and our fuel pump has failed. All right, I've got a fuel pump on a chunk of hose. We're gonna drop this down in the tank for the fill neck pump all the old poop ass out and change our sending unit and put some new poop ass in. Assuming a nearby O'Reilly's, if there is a nearby O'Reilly's, has a sending unit. If not, I brought a pump from a lawnmower. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. Would you like some apple cider? I think I'm good. Thanks. Sure? Yeah. Probably be fine. The apple cider is dehydrated, so it's <laughs> a bit <laughs> Apple's had a tough night of drinking the night before. Well, I mean, they're in a limo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a big no, dog. I don't know what I'm looking at. Junk. Well, there's the problem. This just rusted off. I'll just hook that back up and throw her back in. Surely this will move fuel. Things aren't looking good for the inside of this tank, but they might be looking good enough for what we're trying to do. Well, time to start calling around, see if anyone has one of these. Unfortunately, it's two to three days to get one here. So we don't have any pumps available. I did bring potentially a higher power pump that we could try to finagle in there. Uh, so let's go do that and see if we can make this thing move fuel. Yippee! <laughs> Somehow we're gonna have to, I just thought of this, we're gonna have to flush all the rust out of the lines or it's gonna clog up all the injectors. Because usually I won't worry about that too much, but there's 900 feet of line and I don't think there's a fuel filter. <laughs> Do we think that that line actually doesn't have holes? We're gonna think that. I have rigged up the John Deere fuel pump anyway, because 17 PSI is the highest pump we got on it right now. And that might, might still be enough to make that motor run. Well. Not well, but it might run. If could, nothing else, we'll know if we have leaks in the lines. So we're going to get this hooked up and we'll be back. All right. Moose can hook this up. I'm going to go hit the Schrader valve up front, see if anything happens. All right, Moose, go for it. Yeah. Oh, that looks like it might do it. It's not a gun. Okay, let's hit the key. Get some fuel down this thing's throat. See if she's even got spark. I guess I just assumed. See what that does. Alright, unplug. We gotta assume we don't have spark. Oh, we got spark there. Okay, you good? All right, crank it. I'm just not gonna be able to see this. Okay. She's 
not spark. Why is she no go boom? I let off. Crank it. Go ahead, Mook. Crank it? Yep. so slightly to run. They got a little higher pitch. Yeah, I was like, VDD. I gotta wonder if someone before us or, or us ran old gas through this and the valves got sticky. They're not closing in time. I've got the uh, throttle closed and the brake cleaner wide open through the little hole in the in the throttle plate, and that's how it's trying to run. What is going on? Go ahead. Can of brake cleaner. We need a fuel tank and a fuel pump. Hey, Mook. Hello. Ready for day two? Yes, it's much warmer today. Yeah, it is. We got no clouds. Good old hunk of sunshine shining down on us up there. A new gas tank and a new fuel pump, which O'Reilly is overnighted for free from the website. Just their standard shipping service. Let's get this tank assembled and get that sucker slapped back under the car and then start dealing with everything up front. I thought about it a bit and I think our piston rings are just stuck and we have like no compression, which hopefully after we cranked it to oblivion and back, it sat there with some heat in it and they might have freed up. Otherwise, we are going to be probably pulling spark plugs and trying to get ATF down the cylinders, which looks to be really difficult because you can barely reach the dang things. That is a noisy chicken. Yes. Should we get to it? I'm gonna heck it up. Go heck the thing up. I'm just kidding, I'm not. It'll probably heck you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> I got the collar. Oh. I don't think he does. Wait, come back. All right, let's get this sucker slapped together. Oh my God, one thing we never got was a gosh dang fuel level sender. Oh. We'll have to pop the old one out of there, cut it up into pieces and use it as a plug. Light it on fire? No, that's redundant, but sure. Light it on fire faster and bigger. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got the batteries hooked up. Uh, we're still putting our tank together, we're going to throw that in, but I just want to make sure this thing still cranks, nothing dumb happened, and see if it sounds different after sitting, see if it built a little more compression. Uh. <laughs> it just 
ran. <laughs> Might be a little more promising today. Let's get that tank in and see if this thing just magically lights off. All right, bolting our new tank back in. There's a lot of broken welds down here. It's kind of scary. This happens when you use an arc welder and scrap metal to build a limo. Let's see if it holds gas. You never know. So yeah, I'm gonna put this in. Then we'll key the fuel pump a few times, get stuff moving around, and see if it runs. There she be. And then hook up this fuel line. And we're gonna run the key a bunch and flush out that uh, fuel rail the rest of the way. So the way these early Ford OBD1 systems work is that when your key goes on, two relays close. One is the ECM and the other one is the fuel pump. The ECM tells the fuel pump to close, so if your ECM relay has a bad connection, you'll hear no clicking and nothing will happen. If you hear one click and it goes click and stays on, that's the ECM. But if you hear two clicks or one louder click and then a second click a second later, like we showed you the other day with this fuel pump relay, that means your fuel pump relay is working. So it'll be like lock, unlock. You hear click, click. So what we're going to do is replace that fuel pump relay with a wire. These two need a touch for the fuel pump to be on. And there we go. I'm going to run that to get a good stream of nice clean fuel. There we go. All right. Plug our fuel relay back in. Put our Schrader valve back in and see if this thing fires. Ready? Yep. Oh, oh sad now. It ran for a little bit. I don't know why it would have stopped. Might have had more air in the lines or something. Cleans up. couple cylinders at least. It's like this under there. Oof. <laughs> it kind of runs. Let's let her sit for a sec after it got a little heat in it. Let the rings do their thing maybe. So while Kevin was running the engine, I came back here to make sure there was no fuel leaks. And sure enough, there's a fuel leak. We think it's the return. It was on the driver's side. All right, right there you can see that it's wet everywhere. So we probably need to go up there and replace a chunk with some temporary rubber hose. All right, there's our fuel line repair. I actually did have to end up cutting a section out. So I bent this tab out of the way and pulled it out of here where I could work on it. I'll just put these clamps back down. I'll just bend those in, into shape. I realized you couldn't see it very well earlier, but here's a better look at just the freaking scrap metal that this thing was built out of. This junk. There's cracked welds all over the place. Structurally terrifying. This is just too... I don't, I don't even know, honestly, what I'm looking at. All right, Mook. Key it. Let's see if we leak. Do it again. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see if we can get this thing to run a little better. Settled 
down. Yeah, no leaks so far. You need like a team to look at the whole car, but I don't see anything. It's sitting there idling now. So what I'm going to do is you clearly have some cylinders that aren't very happy because it's shuttering, so it's in balance. I'm going to pop one wire off at a time from the cap and see which one doesn't make a difference. I'll shock you, so be careful. That one made maybe a difference. That one made a difference. That one made a difference. That one made a difference. We've got three dead cylinders. Let's go ahead and pop those plugs out and start with a compression test. Uh, main reason I'm starting with compression today is because this one was dead and these two are dead and they're next to each other. So that makes me question maybe we have a valve issue in that area or we have a head gasket blown between those two. So I'm gonna pop them out, hit them with the old compresso meter and see uh, see what's what. Would you call a uh, Compression tester ones, a, a bonkometer. A bonkometer. A uh, little fuel injection tech. If you don't know anything about fuel injection vehicles, the fuel system runs from the tank. There's a high pressure or a low pressure pump, depending on what style it is. And then it's fed from that through the line. Uh, if it's a low pressure in the tank, it's fed to a high pressure pump in the line, which is some mid 80s Fords did. It was terrible. And then it's fed up through the fuel filter to the rail, which is right here. All these injectors are on the rail. And at the back of the rail, there's a pressure regulator that runs through the return in the tank. And that's why uh, fuel injection systems are a little bit better than a stock carb system. Well, they're arguably way better, but they handle heat better than a stock carb system because they return fuel to the tank and flush out that hot gas. Basically, if you're not getting fuel, follow that system backwards or start at the back and work forward. It's either going to be a pump, a filter, pressure regulator might be bad, letting all the fuel run back. Uh, injectors might be clogged, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all the same stuff as carburetors, but with 100,000 more sensors to make the engine operate as if it was a carburetor. That's literally what OBD-1 is, is it gets rid of the... <laughs> air flowing past the venturi to exactly meter the amount of fuel it needs if it's set up right and turns it into there's a big ass pile of wires that we're going to make stuff just barely operate enough to run because it's 1986 and we don't really have the computer technology for good fuel injection anywho here's the spark plug if you're looking for a little more in-depth uh, example of fuel system repair and specifically one of that dual pump setup i mentioned mook just put a video out a couple weeks ago with her 89 F-150 and we redid the fuel system on that sucker. So what I'm going to do for this compression test is remove the coil wire so the vehicle won't start and I'm going to hold the throttle all the way open so that it can breathe properly. That's something everyone screws up in compression tests is they don't hold the throttle all the way open. Don't care. It doesn't matter what kind of engine it is except for a diesel because they don't have a throttle plate. It's got to be wide open. Kevin? Yeah? That chicken's coming back for me. What the hell? What was that? I was running like the chicken. They run like this. <laughs> Crazy bastard. Heck off. Go ahead, Moot. Okay. We got plenty of compression in that cylinder. That's a good healthy motor. So, it's not a compression issue, which is good. good. 
that's all good. So we got a good plug. We've got plenty of compression. Um, it's either a bad spark plug wire or a bad fuel injector. While I'm dealing with plugs, let me mention something. People will get an engine that runs kind of rough and they'll be like, oh, I need new plugs, and they'll put plugs in. Most of the time, even if plugs are all rusty and old and they got a bunch of miles on them, as long as the electrode is flat and the, uh, the ground strap looks good, as long as like the structure of the plug is good and it's not cracked and it properly sparks like that one, it's going to run the same as a brand new plug. You're just throwing 30 bucks away for no reason. So, like, I don't think we've ever put a set of plugs in a revival engine before. I could be wrong. Uh, oh, I think we did in the gold cutlass just because that motor was seized. I still could be wrong. I don't know. I think I think we did once or twice, but long story short, you don't usually need new plugs. It's not usually the problem. People are just loading the parts cannon and letting it rip towards the motor versus properly diagnosing. If I had to guess, it's either that spark plug wire or the fuel injector's not working properly. Either way, let's move on to the next one. Anywho, heck off. Belly button? No, 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 no. Just this plug wire. I don't need to know if my belly button has continuity. I think the world wants to know, Kevin. Mook's gonna ohm out this plug wire. What'd it say? 4.9. Yep, good plug wire. So, it's not a spark issue. It's probably a fuel injector. Blah. And either we just run them until they start working, or go get new ones. All right, just for shits and giggles and to be sure of things, gone ahead and scraped off all the points in our cap and rotor they were a little crusty not terrible and I thought I, I didn't like specifically check but I thought I heard spark when I was jumping the gap with the wires earlier so now we know it's good to go uh, Luke's gonna throw a quart of type F in this thing so we can see if she actually goes in gear and stays in gear and we'll try it again <laughs> I went through and smacked those fuel injectors with a bashing device to maybe free him up. I don't know, man. Let's see if it's any better. Reasonably smooth. Let's see if this makes a difference again. It's still a little shaky, but you'll have that. Aha! That one still doesn't do anything. This one? No, not that one. Now. Well, that's running pretty okay, honestly. I think maybe smacking those injectors might have shook them loose. I don't think it was really a spark problem. I mean, I mean, could have been the cap and rotor as well. motor cleaned right up. It's running pretty damn good now. It's actually a pretty healthy sound in 302 though. We might have ourselves a driving 35 and a half foot limo. Should we try it? Yeah. All right, it runs. All the fluids are topped off. Let's see if it'll drive one car length back. So, you know, like three football fields.
the whole car on the screen here. There we go. Well, there we go. We traveled one car length back and forward. I think we were about four miles on the odometer. I guess at this point we uh, put insurance on this pile of junk if we even can. And then see if we can take it up down the road, see how bad our brakes really are. All right, Heck, are you ready for this? I'm gonna stand under your hat. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. I don't think I've ever been this scared about driving a car on the road for the first time in 20 years. It doesn't feel like this vehicle's been off the road for 20 years, but I know that number is real. And that's why I'm scared. Well, it's 35 yeah. and a half feet of sledgehammer and I'm up front. And of course, the one road we have to drive on right here is like a busy highway, so. This might be the last time you guys see Junkyard Dig. You're in the back, you'll live. You'll just go, wee. No, it'll be like a slide hammer. I just go, bam. <laughs> <laughs> Secondary impact. I'm like, oh, I mostly lived. And then I take a mook to the back of the head. Yeah, and then you die. Well, anyway, I guess this is it. We're about to drive a 35 and a half foot limo that's been off the road for 18 years from a tractor lot in a cornfield in the middle of Iowa. Right this way, ma'am. Thank you. Mind the poop and your head. <laughs> hey. This is as far as your camera zooms. <laughs> I'm too old and fat to actually turn around all the way to see anything behind me. Okay. Dang it, it started again. I was hoping it just died. Oh, fasten seatbelts. <laughs> actually, don't mind if I do. Oh, here we go. turning and nothing's happening. <laughs> it's not like it turns, it just meanders over. Are we going to McDonald's? Driver! Don't make me come back there, it'll take an hour. There's a cemetery to the north. That seems appropriate for the first drive. We're, we're actually driving. 35 and a half foot limo down the road for the first time in 20 years, we're gonna die. Let's just, this is redundant, but let me set this. More so to make sure Mook doesn't fall out. Despite the tires being new, they have some flat spots. Uh, how's the ride, ma'am? It's a little shaky. It's a lot shaky. Are we, are we coming apart? <laughs> are all the tires bolted on? This is terrifying. Holy crap, it's rattling so hard. I think there's some flat spots in the tire. What? <laughs> I've never been in a Ford Mart. Purple is my favorite color. No, I don't want any ice cream, thank you. I'll take the third one. It's not as hard to drive as I would have anticipated. I mean, it's just big and you gotta predict where it's going, but it ain't that bad. It'll either crash the rest of the welds or smooth those tires out on the way home. Either one is a solution I'm willing to accept. All right, we're going for it. Ripperoni. It's actually not as bad as I thought for getting out of its own way. Like, it's totally drivable, besides this part. What is going on? Why is that so bad? This window won't go up. So it's a little windy and there's poop in my face. Oh, we're getting past. <laughs> we're just trying to not die. <laughs> it's shaking so bad. It's awful. It's got awful. The brakes have gotten better. Hey! What? This isn't McDonald's. I mean, there's a chicken over there, but it's alive. And it's a chicken. Damn it, it's stuck. Um, I'm sorry ma'am. I can't hear you. I'm, I'm going to put the partition up now. No you're not. Leave me alone. I mean, the ergonomics of driving it aren't nearly as bad as I thought. It just shakes your teeth out. Yeah. I'm sure it was really bad back here since he had four tires. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> one of like the, what are they called, decanters or whatever? Yeah. He was back there just like smacking the wall. 
Well, I guess let's clean up our mess and get this mess on the road. Before it back. gets too dark, yeah. Yeah, back to Ames. All right. Odometer, 31,907. No bull crap, we're actually gonna drive this thing. This is just ridiculous, looking back at like that. I'm moving that right now. Here come the shakies. Uh, Alright, there's gotta be a sweet spot on the speedo here where it doesn't shake as bad. Oh my god, it's not 45. Oh, it's it's frame beaming right now. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna die. So 45 is a no-go, the whole thing starts the banana. I'd be surprised if Dash is still attached by the time we get home. All right, I'm gonna shut up and concentrate on staying alive now. We'll see you at the gas station, assuming I could even get in to get gas. Well, there we go. Pulled up the first time. Missed the fuel pump by 10 feet. Went way too, or didn't go far enough. So I figured out you park your driver position, like you can feel at this pump, and then you go to that pump, <laughs> and you can put gas in. All right. Onward, I guess. Ready for this? Yeah, I got my snackies. <laughs> you gonna need them. We're taking back roads, so it'll be like twice as long. Probably, yeah. probably all 45 miles back. So, let's do it. I gotta keep around 35, or else it starts frame beaming. Oh, I bet. Holy shit, the cruise control works. I hit the buttons a bunch, and she came to life, and she's holding 35 like it's nothing. Yeehaw! Or should I say yeah, 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 yeah? All right. Passing the eight mile mark. I think the bar's about ready to jump out of the car. It's shaking so much back there. But we're making our first turn, heading towards Ames finally. Oh boy. Rubs a little, that's fine. Up and at him. Oh, this is doing go. This poor motor is like, why am I in this car? I'm a 302. I'm meant for light passenger cars and Fox body Mustangs and single cab short bed F100s. That's it. Well, not 35 and a half foot limos. This should be a 351 or a 460 or a 69 or it, it, shit. A th inline 300 would have been better for the torque range, but <laughs> nah. 302 in this. <laughs> All right, tires smoothing out a little more. Not to say it's good because it's like it's definitely not. Uh, there's a big old freaking tractor up here. I'm just gonna keep sending it, you know. You know what, we're all gonna die someday, so I might as well go out with a statement. All right, next turn. 14 miles on the odometer now. Temp's looking good. Brakes are getting a little better. It's also getting louder, so I don't know if the, the mufflers fell off or what. Time for a little gravel travel to avoid town. Four miles here, let's see how we do. Oh man, that's a hill. What if I high center on that? Like, <laughs> it's just a normal hill, but that's a real possibility. Uh, Limousine, 35 feet long. I hope I don't blow this stop sign. I don't know if I'm gonna stop on time. Ah! I should really start a band. Gravel travel's going well. About to pass 20 miles. This thing's a lot better on gravel because the gravel you can't feel the wheels being nine and a half inches off center and out of balance or whatever the hell's going on. So, not bad. We're gonna hop on the old Lincoln Highway and head back that way for a while. 25 miles on the odometer, everything is looking nice. Really impressed with how well this runs for having sat for 20 years. Oh my god, I don't know if I'm gonna make this turn. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. I about died. All right, time to see how she handles. One of, one of the things I kind of want to do is take this to a road course and fill it full of people, but I don't think there's any track in the world that probably let me do that with people in it. Oh God, high stakes. Yeah, the exhaust is definitely getting louder. 
it's not bad. Like, I'm really, really surprised how easy this actually is to drive. Also, how dirty the camera lens is now that we've been driving on gravel. Whoops. There's somehow no body roll. I think that's just because it's so long that it defies the laws of physics and can't roll since the suspension's not on one parallel plane. <laughs> 33 miles, state center, Iowa. So we're gonna keep on keeping on. Oh, hang on. Yep, brakes still work. I don't know how. That's terrifying. It's kind of scary, honestly, because whatever weak points, dent, fail sitting in the barn are gonna go out when I'm doing 70 mile an hour down the road. And this thing's gonna basically turn into an ICBM and take out a city block. Da, 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 it's the Veda! We've done it! The last step now is to navigate through the, uh, the town part of town, and then we're at the shop. Call it a win. And... Yeah. <laughs> Disregard all the scraping. But there it is! <laughs> we freaking made it. 48.7 miles. Not bad for the first drive in 20 years. And trust me, there's no, uh, no way we could have faked this and like put a car in a trailer and drove it home and then popped it off at intersections once in a while and driven it around because not only have I showed you the odometer, but also because I literally don't own anything that could tow this. I need to get out, my back freaking hurts. This seat is just straight up and down, it's terrible. I don't know if I can put us and the car all in one frame. All right, so that's gonna do it for episode one of our ridiculous limo revival. So at this point, we wanna see down in the comments all the ridiculous, dumb ideas that you guys wanna see us do with this limousine. Drop them down there. We're gonna do them before we get rid of this thing. As for now, that's all. We'll see you guys next week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, subscribe to Junkyard Mook and all our other friends. We will see you next time on Junkyard Digs. Peace.